Hi Rocketeers, I'm Charlie Garcia and this is another episode of High Powered Rockets. I got my level 3 rocket certification all the way back in January of 2017. I had so much fun on that flight that I immediately started planning my next level 3 launch. I bought my next level 3 rocket motor for a launch at ERG in 2019, but at the time that I bought the rocket motor, it didn't come with an O-ring kit, so I couldn't launch it that day. I had to write the manufacturer and they promptly sent me a new set of O-rings. That was exactly the point in my life when I had to move across the country to start working at Agile Space Industries. Agile Space Industries started growing really fast and it was super exciting, but it didn't leave me a ton of time to launch my own rockets. So it wasn't until March of 2021 that I started thinking about my next launch attempt for this rocket. During the launch campaign in early 2021, me and a bunch of my friends went out to California. Tons of rockets were launched. It's just that mine wasn't one of them. Unfortunately, the night before the launch, a minor mishap with the avionics system meant that Lumineer required an altimeter donor, and Artemis happened to be the closest one nearby. The other power hatch. Power hatch. Oh, that was a loud pop. Artemis didn't fly in 2021, and Artemis didn't fly in 2022 either. Just a few weeks ago, Joe Barnard came out here to Durango, Colorado to mix a rocket motor with me for his Space Shock project. While he was here, Joe gave me some light ribbing about the fact that Artemis was still sitting on the ground after all these years. Oh, Charlie of 2018? And so finally, I thought it was time we could do something about that. Having been sitting on the ground for so long and moved across the country a couple of times, Artemis needed a little bit of tender loving care before it could go back into the air. The first order of business was to rebuild the avionics bay. I wanted to build a better avionics bay than I used for my level 3 certification, and so I spent the time to organize the wires, to strain relieve everything, to plan out better power management and better switches for all the systems. I also included a second camera inside of the avionics bay. A new Runcam 4K split was designed to be controlled by Ava. I hoped that this would allow me to have better success with my cameras, since this camera wouldn't have to be turned on when I put the rocket together, and it would hopefully have more battery life and more SD card memory to work with. The second major upgrade that I tackled was making a new bulkhead for the booster. This has a U-bolt on it, which can't unthread, and it also holds the rocket motor in with the aero pack, so that everything is nice and squarely retained by this new structural component. I spent some time designing and milling this component out of a chunk of 6061 aluminum. After that was done, I decided to tackle the recovery system. I sewed a new drug parachute out of Kevlar. This parachute is more robust to deployment loads, and also it doesn't need protection from the ejection charge, so it's a little easier to use. I re-sewed the loops on the end of my harnesses, and then I also made a new deployment bag for my parachute. I use a 7-foot nylon parachute for my main parachute but it needed something to help protect it from the ejection charge. And a deployment bag is a great solution because not only does it protect it from the ejection charge better than a Nomex burrito, it also helps the parachute deploy cleaner. With all of those upgrades complete, I sanded everything down, applied some Bondo, and then a new coat of black paint. I also designed this logo and applied it in silver leaf to the top of the airframe. It was time to head to Southern California, and I couldn't have picked a better time. It was snowing buckets when I left. There had been maybe six feet of snow where I live in the last two weeks before that, and I had to spend a couple hours digging my car out. By the time I made it to LA though, it was a balmy 50 degrees. I launched from the Friends of Amateur Rocketry site near Mojave, California. It's a great place to hang out and see all kinds of cool rocketeers working on awesome projects. And it was really exciting to be back. On this particular weekend at FAR, there were a bunch of people launching a bunch of really cool rockets, and I was not first off the rail. Joe Barnard launched his own rocket, a two-stage rocket with a 360-degree camera on top of it. Next, my friend Andrew Adams tried to launch part of his project Saros. Unfortunately, this resulted in a somewhat longer-than-planned static fire on the pad rather than a flight as intended. With those flights done, I decided it was time to get myself out to the rail. This is where things started to go wrong. The GoPro camera I have inside of my avionics bay is designed to be triggered by Wi-Fi. 
Unfortunately, while I could find the Wi-Fi, I could not convince the new GoPro app to connect to a camera as old as the Hero Session 4. With batteries and SD cards burning on the rest of the cameras and avionics, I decided to scrub this camera from the launch and try it with what I had. Me and my friends retreated to the flight line, and we gave a countdown and pushed the button. Yep. So we're launching this. Yeah. Yes. Five. Four. Three. Two. The CTI M1520 Blue Streak motor I used for this flight had a spectacular plume, and Lavi captured some incredible photos of it as it lifted off. The rocket flew to 12,108 feet and descended on its drogue parachute until about 1,000 feet where it deployed the main parachute. It touched down about 1.4 miles away. At this point in time, it had already been a super successful day at FAR, but it was about to get even cooler. The next flight up after mine was a two-stage launch attempt by the MIT rocket team. When I was in college, I was a very enthusiastic member of the MIT rocket team. After a bunch of launch prep, they had the rocket on the pad and ready to go. This is when we discovered a problem. You see, when I was at MIT, I wrote a bunch of launch procedures with my friend Andrew Adams. These launch procedures spelled out in exhaustive detail how to prepare, practice, and launch a rocket. These procedures included radio channel settings to configure walkie-talkies, trackers, and even the altimeters on board the rocket too. The MIT rocket team flies two kinds of altimeters. The first is home built by them and includes some really awesome features. The second is an off-the-shelf telemetrum product. See, I also fly telemetrum products. They work really well. And I use the same launch procedures I helped write back at MIT. They're really good launch procedures and they make a lot of sense to keep using. Unfortunately, this meant that we had both configured our rockets to use channel 5. Now, I get a phone call from a member of the team who uh, lets me know that uh, they're wondering, is there anybody else who might possibly be using channel 5? Which, of course, I knew the answer was me. So I grabbed one screwdriver, uh, swapped my shoes for some sneakers, took off my coat that I've been wearing for the day, and sprinted out into the desert to try and get my rocket turned off before their rocket had to launch. Artemis landing site. Right. Rest easy. You've done your job. Looks like there's no significant damage to the nose cone. Chute looks a little trapped, but otherwise happy. There's your crater. All right, let's watch. Finally got to the rocket, got it turned off, and then I was able to turn around and watch the MIT rocket team's launch from where I was about one and a half miles away. After the MIT rocket team flew Project Phoenix, 
I carried Artemis back to the launch line and watched two static fires, one by UC Irvine and one by Long Beach. The UCI static fire was one of the most spectacular ones I've ever seen. So after all was said and done, I wrapped everything up and drove back to Durango, Colorado. Things have been super busy at work, and it was nice to have a, a little break to, to work on some hobby projects. I'm still working on all of my hobby projects, but uh, my day job is building liquid rocket engines, so building liquid rocket engines is not quite the break that it used to be. I'm already planning my next trip out to the desert to launch Artemis again. Hopefully it won't take so long to get it in the air. I've got a new 360 degree camera, and I've made an acrylic section for the nose cone of Artemis that should let me record launch footage all the way up. I'm Charlie Garcia, and until next time, good luck and Godspeed.